Georges, you know, we, we're fading to the George record. Marauder and Donna. Yeah, yeah uh, but we, we, we do want to talk to Stephen. That's another sort of important record to you, isn't it? Oh. Stephen Morris is here. Yes, mm. it is. Yeah, very uh, much so, yeah. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I loved, you, I, I loved your book, Record, Play, Pause, is Stephen's book. Um, uh, I, there's so much to enjoy. I uh, particularly enjoyed you going to see Hawkwind with your mum and dad. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was uh, a cultural <laughs> A family evening. outing. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I enjoyed their reaction. <laughs> you sort of agreed to go and see each other's music, hadn't you? That's right. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I had to go and see Marlene Dietrich and uh, Count Basie. And, Both uh, of whom you enjoyed. Oh, I did, yeah. yeah. And uh, in, re in return, they'd go and see... They didn't know what they'd let themselves in for. And I like yeah. your family holidays as well, particularly the one where you went to see an oil slick and Dartmoor prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Only, only to be vomited on by my mother. On your head? Yeah, that's right. We, yeah. I just bought a nice Southwestern. Um, luckily, yeah. I was wearing it in the car at the time. What I did... I, mean, I learned a lot of things I did not know. I'll tell you what, I did not know at all that, that, that rock, inverted commas, drumming's gain, was music journalism's loss. That you, it, that you worked for Record Mirror for a bit. Yeah, on a freelance basis. Yeah, yeah I wasn't actually on the staff. Yeah, um, it... it, it the basis was if you let me in for nothing yeah uh, you got a good review <laughs> so i tended to give everyone a bad review because <laughs> i never got the, the only one i got in for free yeah uh, oddly enough was barclay james harvest at the wow. palace theater wow i gushed about them great <laughs> come on that's always the way right, <laughs> always yeah. the best way you know it's sad your bread's buttered yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, uh, comics was a big part of your child you got lost in comics didn't you oh yeah yeah, I mean, now, now the, the, the things that you used to see on comics are on, on the big screen. I just watched the, the, what's it, the Avengers, yeah. and Spider-Man's big. Um, yeah, no, I really, really was into comics and collecting bubblegum cards. And we're just cars. talking about the bubblegum cards, the yeah. Outer Limits bubblegum cards, which you've made me now go back on eBay and try and buy a set of, yeah. Right. Well, I'm sorry about that, Stuart. But well, no, it's, it's money well spent. And they are fantastic. My yeah. daughter saw them and yeah. said, what are these? Can I have them? Yeah. No, I remember them creeping me out as a little kid. Mm. Things like the television terror, which you reproduce here uh, that, in the book. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And you, you, you're uh, playing Krautrock in the woods. Playing Krautrock in the woods <laughs> for reasons that still make no sense. I've no idea what I thought we were doing, that, that uh, we'd go and sit in the woods and play um, Cam and yeah. Terry Riley and go, oh, oh, a flying saucer. Oh, no, it's a plane going to ring away. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And you'd, it, there's a, there was a sort of lake there, and if you carried on far enough, you'd come across a bloke fishing. And <laughs> this was all around the Macclesfield. Oh, fishing, yeah. Yeah. fishing to yeah. the strains of uh, Kraut Rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That music sort of inspired, that was where your drumming inspiration first came from, the Germanic sort of motoric beat people, Yeah, that, wasn't that's it? right. It was like Noi... Uh, who really were the motoric beat. Yeah. Kyle yeah. Stinger's fantastic drummer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jack out of Cam. Yeah. Do you know, I hadn't really thought about that that much. It's stupid. I hadn't thought about it that much until we were choosing some choosing some records yesterday. I mean, Lorna were listening to some records and I said, oh, Atrocity Exhibition, it's been long, that'd be a good one. And, and the beginning of Atrocity Exhibition is very, it's very Jackie Lieber's eyes, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. yeah. It is a bit. Which I, is I, great. I, I own up to it. No, 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 it's a uh, homage. It's good, yeah, One yeah, of yeah. the things reading the book that came up, you, you went a lot of places on your own, gigs and things. You, you were, were you a loner? Uh, or was it just because no one would go with you? Yeah, that's probably it. No one would go with me. Um, I mean, the, the, my mates had sort of, I was forbidden from associating with my friends. You have to read the book to find out yeah, why. Yeah, so yeah. I, I ended up doing a lot of things on my own. Going to festivals mostly, which was, yeah. you would think would be quite dangerous, but it, it, it wasn't. Uh, Buxton, Buxton Festival was yes. always a good one, because it wasn't far. It's no. Like, just going to Buxton, no, that's all right. Well, you uh, didn't get to see the grown dogs because of the rain. That's I, I would have done. They just they they told, didn't turn up, didn't they? Yeah, they told him, McPhee, it's raining. Don't fancy playing the blues that's, today. That's terrible. Yeah. I thought <laughs> Alex Harvey did. Yeah. Uh, Alex Harvey was fantastic. Yeah. They were a great live band, I thought. Yeah, the free they, trade all were. That. they were fantastic, yeah. Um, I, I mean, you're... Uh, I, I knew a lot of this stuff, but reading it again, I mean, um, Martin Hannett just gave you a horrible time in the studio, didn't he? Um, on reflection, yes. I mean, uh, when you... Making you record a drum and a cymbal at a time. At a time, every, in series, yeah. Do, right, do the bass drum part, right, now do the snare drum part, now do that, and, and then he'd stick it all together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very painful because I couldn't not hit anything. No. So I hit my leg, and, yeah. and it was just covered in bruises. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it worked. I, I remember thinking, what, what 
why why am I doing right, this? There must be a reason. But uh, I do, you, do you think, looking back, Stephen, it was purely for the good of the music, or was there an element of, I'm going to I'm going to show these kids what for sort of thing? I, I think there must have been. I yeah. mean, Martin's thing was uh, it, it's the job of the producer to weave a complex web of tensions, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what he did. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, some great records came out. But some out, great right? records came out. Of oh it. yeah, no, undeniably, undeniably. They don't seem to belong to any period. No. That seem to transcend period. Yeah. You remember very vividly the the trip back from London where um, Ian had a a fit. Yeah, Ian first, had a fit, and he, easy, you yeah. thought he was just kicking the back of your seat. Oh yeah, yeah. Him to stop it, and you you really put that down as a significant moment because you say his lyrics sort of changed after that moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously they would because it was like a really. A really big thing in your life mm. to have something like that happen to you mm. um because you know we, we were you went to music play music staying up late being a rock band that was that was it that was mm. all we wanted to do it was all ian wanted to do and then to find out well you know what you've got to do is lead a quiet life yeah it's yeah. like that's all been the rug's been pulled out from under you so it all darkens so from it, that point. yeah i think it did i think it did a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. That's right. I hadn't really thought of that before. Yeah, it must be this all you've ever wanted, and you can't really do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and um, explain very loosely. People have to buy the book. So explain the significance of the the giant panda in Macclesfield Museum. <laughs> <laughs> the panda, yeah, the largest ever killed. Um, that was basically where I was really excited about going to America and I mean, me and Gillian went for yeah, all right, okay I was trying to get her to turn my trousers up right. should have got the right size ones but it was like oh I'll take you out for a... and uh, the thing in uh, in Macclesfield Museum is a, is a giant panda and I, it was after seeing the giant panda yeah. which was reluctant oh god we're not looking at that again um, that was when I got the phone call um, about Ian so it's mm. kind of the two images are right. sort of have yeah. become intermingled in my memory. And, right. and, and, and also it's a sort of like, you know, it was one of the famous things that people went to see in Macclesfield. And of course Ian and where he lived mm. and his legacy, they, they drew people to Macclesfield as well. Yeah, well, it's where Ian, um, Ian Stone is basically, it's a couple hundred yards away from the panda. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it, the thing about Macclesfield is it's, now it seems such a very small place and yeah. how... I managed to live there for so long without bumping into Ian Curtis because we had so much in so, common. Mm. Um, just yeah. it baffles me. Let's kind of let's sort of transition a bit between the book and movement. We'll still talk about the book, but let's hear something, shall we? That because the book sort of ends the at book, movement, yeah, it does, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? So it's quite neat, yeah. Really. And you've chosen a couple of tracks from movement, which we'll talk about this new issue. Uh, chosen time. Any particular reason you you chose this? I, well, I, I chose that one because it's um, it was the beginning of. I thought where we were getting sort of like disco up, you know, yeah, that, that yeah. is like a really energetic yeah. uh, kind of thing, getting away a bit from uh, from Joy Division. It was one of the first things at uh, gigs, you just like try and play it as fast as you could. It's like all about energy. Great. Um, Device is that that's making the squiggly noises, Stephen? That, that's me banging on uh, a, an early Simmons right. drum thing. And you wrote the words to that? I d uh, yeah, that's right, my yeah. attempt to be poetic. <laughs> uh, Stephen's uh, memoir is out now, Record, Play, Pause, and there's there's this uh, lavish reissue with, Gorgeous, a, with a just looking at the book, book now. And, um, uh, what, pictures, what, what else is in the box set, apart from the original album? Uh, there's the original album, there's, the, there's a lovely book, uh, there's another... Uh, CD, which is all demos, which I think we'd forgotten about, right. and uh, some live stuff, some rehearsal stuff, and uh, his a DVD, which. <laughs> What are you laughing at? It's because you, know, the way you said it. Why? The way you just said it then, well, with, with real it. kind of trepidation and hesitancy you know, in your it's voice. It's painful. It's painful viewing for is me, it? but very entertaining for anyone else. It's, it's great. Why is it painful for you? Just because anybody's old DVDs are painful. Well, yeah. no, it's my attempts at singing, right. which which uh, 
are just hideous. I did, well, at one point you, you said, said, and I couldn't see this. At one point, you was, you, you was reading about in, in in the book that thing that you were saying um, when you started to sing, you sounded like Al Jolson. Yeah, that's right. I found that surprising. <laughs> well, no, I could. <laughs> I, the only way I can sing is if I sing like somebody else. Right. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know. If I found myself channeling Al Jolson, you know, right. it sounded like singing, but not yeah. really. I mean, you wrote the words to that. And you, I mean, this is a real transitional record, isn't oh, it? Because God, you yeah. were working out... Hooky sings a couple of songs oh, yeah, on Hockey the album. Does, yeah. That's Bernard, although it doesn't sound like the voice that Bernard eventually no. became, no. in a way. And so, um, is this the beginning of sort of trying to experiment with electronics to move it on from Joy Division into what New Order was to become? Yeah. I mean, it was very unconscious. We didn't, like, sit down with a plan and say this is what we're going to do it just kind of happened there was uh, the drum machine was the first thing a drum yeah. machine since and the problem that we had was um who's going to sing yeah so i mean when the as you can tell by what you know the dvd everybody had to go and by the process of natural <laughs> selection yeah the drummer wrote himself out and it ended up being Bernard. Although initially, Rob Gretton, your manager, your light manager, thought that you should be the singing drummer at the front. Yeah, yeah, he's singing, put the drums at the front. Oh, mm. God, that's yeah, <laughs> bit, just like Phil Collins. No, no, <laughs> no thanks. If there's an interesting, just very quickly here, there's an interesting, in the, in the excellent line of notes in the booklet, there's a thing he said that Ian would have hated New Order and then goes on to say, well, maybe he wouldn't actually, maybe he'd have got into it and, uh, you know, hanging out in clubs. What do you think? Um, it's very hard to say. I mean, everybody would, 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 would love you to come out with some alternate... I mean, there must be an alternate history when Joy Division turn into New, New Order. But, but just, with Ian. But with Ian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was he a right? It's a fascinating it, thought. It's a fascinating thought. I, I really I really don't know. So many things would have had to have gone right. differently. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was very difficult for you, because without really kind of um, opening up too much about the grief and the loss, you missed Ian terribly, not only as a friend, but because of his role as kind of editor uh, uh, yeah, yeah. within the band. And Paul Morley writes in the book, says, like, of the three pieces, it's hesitant, flawed and unformed. And it's a, this, a, another phrase I picked up from the book, the sound of keeping going whilst being lost. Um, yeah. That's right. It, 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 you, you just sort of like running. Yeah. yeah. On, running you didn't know, you didn't know what to do, but you had to do something. Yeah, we had to keep going. You had to keep going in a way maybe to get over what had happened because yeah. That, yeah. That, that was... To process it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And writing music was just sort of the thing that we enjoyed. And then, uh, sorry, and, and, and how important was Gillian? I know she's, she's your partner and everything, but how important was she as a kind of breath of fresh air in coming into and, 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 in sort of lifting that tension and the sense of loss? Um, yeah, she was very uh, a calming influence. Yeah, I think, and it was sort of uh, such a left field thing to do. Yeah, because the thing was we we decided we definitely, definitely, definitely weren't going to replace Ian mm. with another singer, whatever. And then it's just well, what do, what do we do? What do we do? And then Rob just rang up one day. I've got an idea. Mm. Get Gillian playing guitar, mm. uh, which. Uh, Seems so obvious now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The, the, and the thing about getting Gillian rather than some red hot guitar player uh, was that when we started off, we couldn't play and we ended up becoming Joy Division because we learned how to do stuff. And was yeah, there any yeah. resistance from Ucky and Barney at having the drummer's wife in the band? <sighs> Uh, well, we just, everybody got sort of out of their heads and uh, said, that's a good idea, yeah, let's, let's go for it. <laughs> let's have, have another tune from, and, and, uh, from uh, uh, Movement, which is just, this, this is a gorgeous reissue. The, the funny thing is also, that you, leafing through the book. you said you didn't know what songs were on there because you added the titles right at the end. Yeah, that's right. So they weren't called that when you were playing? No, 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 because no, we used to, we, uh, black humour. We uh, what happened? We 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 just give every a song title. Like, how can we get death into this one? And okay. one was called <laughs> Little Dead, and that one we just listened to Chosen Time is called Death Rattle. Right. And so on the set list, uh, they'd all got these names that we knew them by. And when we saw the album, uh, even now it's like Chosen Time. Which, which one's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So so what did what was the hymn? Can you remember? The hymn was always the hymn. Okay. Because that was that was a pretty doomy thing. Yeah. It and is. The great thing about this was this is great at gigs because it's got the uh, the old rock and roll false stop in it. Right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, stop, we start clapping. Ah, no, it hasn't. We're going to start again. <laughs> right. We'll see if we get that far. If we get that far. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, New Order, the hymn. Uh, Tim Gardner, Aileen Ellsbury and all, all very much uh, enjoying Stephen. That is from the 1981 debut album Movement, which now is out in the definitive edition out now. It's a gorgeous thing. DVDs, demos, a lovely book. Uh, yes, that was the hymn. Uh, you're doing some book readings or chats, aren't you? Yes, just chats. Yeah. So you wouldn't want me reading. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm off uh, Liverpool on Monday. On Monday with yeah. Dave Haslam and the, the British, British Music, Music Experience. Experience. And uh, then uh, Trades Club Hebden Bridge on the 17th. That's the Friday. 22nd yeah. at the Social in London. Yes. And uh, it says a book reading at the Mitchell Theatre in Glasgow on the 23rd. It That's says that, right. Yeah, I've got to read there. Oh, oh right, OK. Oh, better practice. <laughs> read a bit. Uh, read a, bit. Read yeah. a little bit, yeah. So, so just, just quickly before we go, um, and so it's so the, the, other, the other bit's written, is it? Yeah, the other bit's, it just needs a bit of sanding, you okay, know, yeah, and it'll be ready to go yeah. next year. Right. Excellent. Um, change suggestions wanted, please. Raise high the roof beams carpenters by Black Peaches on the chain. Yeah, radcliffe.maconi at bbc.co.uk. Maybe Staples tomorrow. We'll leave you another of Stephen's selections, the MC5. Cheers, Steve. Thank you.